Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another fun mod, this time in the form of a bit of a blast from the past, the DEMV Mark 4 and 5 rovers. Now these particular rovers have been around for actually for quite a while, made originally by the wonderful Bobcat Industries, and well... One of the problems with older mods is, as you know, the Kerbal Space Program game becomes more and more updated sometimes, older mods kind of fall by the waves, the waysides, and a lot of mod makers, especially ones who are as prolific as Bobcat and continuously making new things, they don't always have time to go back to, you know, update the old ones to the new version of the game. And that was the case with a lot of the old rovers, especially the DEMV classification of rovers, which uh, stands for Duna Exploration Manned Vehicle. And uh, yeah, so a forum user by the name of Raptor22 has, of course, with permission from Bobcat, gone ahead and made the updates for him, bringing them in to the point .9 update from, oh, God only knows what update these things were made in, but <laughs> if we head into the space plane hangar, we can check out what uh, this mod has in store for us and uh, bringing back to us from uh, so long ago. Now, of course, we have the DEMV Mark V module here and the Mark IV command pod. Now, the fun thing about the Mark V, which we'll go through first because, well, it's quite simple to go through. That's it. Bam, we have put the Mark V into the space plane hangar and it is now good to go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love this little rover. It is a very, very tiny little rover and just, just, oh, it's it's cute. It's, it's beautiful. And it does have an opening hatch, which we can open there and take a look inside the amazing cockpit that this thing has. And it also comes equipped with an antenna that we can raise up right there. And also some solar panels, which we can't open up in the space plane hangar, but these uh, these little back panels here open up as a little solar panel. Small issue with that for now. The solar panels and the antenna don't yet work in the new updated version. And it's one of the problems with updating older ones. Sometimes things go a bit wrong, but hopefully those will be fixed soon. It is planned to be fixed. So uh, yes, hopefully eventually in the near future, we will have a working Mark IV or no Mark V rather antenna and solar panels and yeah, well, that's the Mark V mod pretty much gone through. <laughs> oh, I love this little thing, but let's throw that away and grab the Mark IV. Now this, this baby is a beast and why? Oh, hold on, we may have to create a new one here. And there we go, now it isn't half opaque. Lovely. The uh, Mark IV, or otherwise known as the Rat, is a very, very cool and very large rover, uh, especially in comparison to the tiny little Mark V. Look at that, you can chuck it onto the back of this thing's truck bed. Uh, but yes, there we go, that is the command module for that. It does have a large amount of electrical charge. The hatch does open to display the not quite as nice looking cockpit as the Mark V, but still pretty cool looking little thing. Close that back up. And then we can go into fuel tanks where we have two fuel tanks for this. One is the DEMV fuel tank for this specific truck. You throw this on the back and there are some engines that go with it here. We'll look at it in a second. And we also have the DEMV drop RCS tanks, which these are not really for the rover. We can place it on there, but dear God, that is um weird. But it fits with the drop pod that goes with this rover, which we'll get to in a little bit. So yes, fuel tank with quite a lot of liquid, uh, liquid fuel and oxidizer, and weird quad ball thing full of a whole lot of monopropellant. Very good indeed. Now in engines, we have the DEMV Mark IV liquid fuel engines, which are pretty cool little engines, not a huge amount of thrust, but, you know, it's designed for landing on a, you know, s uh, hmm, lower gravity environment than Kerbin. So, Duna, for instance, is, of course, what this was originally designed for. Uh, but yeah, we can chuck these onto 
the side. There we go. Beautiful little engines. And we'll just flip these around for over there. Bam. Lovely. Now we have nothing in command and control, nothing in structural, nothing in aerodynamic, of course, because these are rovers, and then all the rest of the stuff is in utility. Nothing in science, of course, but uh, utility, we have, rather than a fuel pod, we can take off these engines here as well. We have a large battery, because of course this is a rover, it uses electrical charge to drive the wheels. And you can throw this thing on here, which has a little bit of monopropellant, and a whole lot of electrical charge. Very nice, very nice indeed. We of course then also do have the DEMV Mark IV chassis, which dear god, look at that crash tolerance. This thing could run into the sun, and it would probably be okay. Um, yeah, if we, whoop, there we go, flip that around, and bam, ah, look at that gorgeous thing. Now, we can't right-click it in here, but there are a lot of fun options with it, including, like, these lights, and we also do have a tail light back here. Uh, but yes, yes, it is a very, very cool chassis for this thing with all six built-in wheels, and, well, it's... Really quite lovely. I, I like this thing. And then we have the drop pod that I spoke of earlier. And, well, it is a giant drop pod that is designed to hold the Mark IV lander inside of it. And then you can open this baby up. Oh, we have it the wrong way around. That's why it didn't attach. And, yeah, it opens up nicely. A nice little ramp comes out. Let's flip this baby around. There we go. And you have this just beautifully intimidating rover sitting in this thing and it's glorious and of course it also does have its own landing legs and of course what would a drop pod be without a parachute we can uh, flip this thing around and hold on let's close that that might help with fitting this on here Ooh, it is not wanting to go now this was working earlier when i uh, tried to put this on it's just having issues at the moment Possibly. Ooh, now I flipped it around. That's not good. But yes, it is a large parachute. For some reason, it's not wanting to cooperate with me right now. But let's uh, just kind of flip this thing around to there. Bam. That's not exactly how it's supposed to go on. But hey, there we go. We have a parachute now. <laughs> and of course, we have those uh, RCS fuel tanks that we talked about earlier that are designed for going on this as well. Because, well, it's a giant behemoth of a thing. You, uh, you know. Shove your RCS there, a few RCS thrusters for landing this on an even lower fuel or a lower gravity environment. Very good, very fun. But let's exit out of the space plane hangar and go and take a look at a couple of these that I've popped onto the moon. Now, these are of course designed for Duna, but they function just as well on the moon. And why are there only two? There should be three out here. Interesting. Well, let's just go and head up here and see what the whole fuss is about. And uh, at least the two Mark IVs are definitely, oh no, wait, there, yeah, the Mark V is here. That wasn't showing up. Interesting. That might be in a glitch. But yeah, the Mark V is here and functional. Well, let's go take a look at that one first. So, oh, hold on. Gotta find the, I was on the right one already. There we are. We have Kamkus and Jebediah in the Mark V here. And if we go take a look at the IVA, we have Jebediah's piloting view. And I love the view from this cockpit. It, it just, you have so much visibility. It is absolutely gorgeous. Very minimalistic display, but hey, it's a rover. You don't really need much besides these right here. It's, it's beautiful. I really, really do love this thing. And if we head back out and go to Kamkis, he is in the back of the rover in the little command center back here. And apparently, he should not touch the comm switch. Okay, now I kind of want to. But yeah, cool little uh, display command area back here. Very nice, very intriguing. Uh, we have the gimbal here. Always good, always good. Let's head back out. And uh, like I said, when we right-click this, we have a lot of new options in here that we couldn't get in the space plane hangar. For instance, we can turn the lights on, which, oh boy, those are some really bright lights. Off, of course, we have cruise control, so we can just kind of let this thing go on its own. Uh, we have its own handbrake. One of the interesting things about these, all of these rovers, 
Uh, they all kind of use their own control system, so rather than the WASD keys, you actually use I, J, K, and L to move these around, and it uses its own handbrake. Using this brake here will not do a thing. You have to actually turn on the handbrake here, which is intriguing, but eh, what are you gonna do? It, it's, it's functional, so it works. Now, of course, we have the hatch we can open, the raise antenna, and also... Where is the deploy solar panel one? Am I just missing it? I very well may be missing it. Hmm. Maybe if I click up here? <laughs> no, that's not seeming to want to deploy. Yeah, there is supposed to be a little solar panel thing that pops up here, but it is not wanting to cooperate. I'm not seeing it on here, unless I am just completely blind, which is always a possibility. Uh, but yes, we can't open the hatch. Sadly, we cannot see the Kerbals inside. And if you actually do want any of your Kerbals to go on an EVA, you need to open the hatch. If you have the hatch closed while they try and go on EVA, it ain't gonna work out well because they pop onto that little hatch there. <laughs> How these guys fit in this thing, I don't know. But F to board. There we go, close this hatch up and deploy the wheels because currently it's in kind of the landing mode. So you'd land on Duna or the moon or whatever and then you can either deploy the wheels from here or hit G on your keyboard. And there we go, the wheels slowly but surely raise up and we now have a deployed little rover. And I'm checking to see if maybe deploying the wheels would somehow let me deploy the solar panel. But nope. Nope, not seeing that selection there. Oh well, c'est la vie. But yes, like I said, unlike other rovers, you use the I, J, K, and L to move around, just like you would with WASD, but of course it is just slightly different. Uh, you still can use the WASD keys, but they function as the reaction wheel rather than for piloting. So it's it's an interesting system, it works well, and you, know, you can still use the WASD to roll yourself over and Dear God, these are some bright lights. We are lighting up those rocks all the way back there. Holy crap, that is... That is impressive. And all coming from those little... <laughs> I think the texture might not be quite correct on that. But let's go and head over to the fuel one. Excellent, it went right to the correct one. And this one... Similarly, we have to deploy the wheels. So if we do that, oh boy, we bounce up a bit when we deploy the wheels. Okay, okay, okay. Let's, so oh, we are moving. Okay, there we go. Now I do like on uh, these Mark IVs here, when you do back up or break, we get the light in the back coming on, which is very cool indeed. I do enjoy that. Let's turn on these equally as bright of lights. And yeah, this baby, this baby just kind of rolls around, similarly to any other rover. Now the internal view for this one, hold on, let's put the uh, handbrake on, there we go. And go to the internal view here, not quite as high res as the Mark V, uh, but still a nice little, nice little cockpit, very good visibility. I love seeing the roll cage there, it's very cool indeed. And if we head back out and go to the other internal view. Back of the cockpit here, we apparently have some pinup models of very, very low resolution and a few more controls. Very nice indeed. And of course, we have these engines. So if we activate, we can... Oh boy! Oh, oh god! Not all of them are on! Only the front right and back left are on. Oh, we are screwed. Um, Mervin and Jungin Kerman, you guys, why are, th ooh, boy. <laughs> oh, interesting. I'm wondering why these aren't quite working correctly. Might be a glitch. Yeah, that's intriguing. I'm, I'm curious as to why only those two seem to be functioning, but we have an amazing crash tolerance, so we can just kind of roll right in here and we are good. There we go, we survived. That is interesting though, I wonder why only those two were working. It might be a glitch in my version or it might be another issue that they are currently having with porting this one over. Uh, but oh well, c'est la vie, let's head back to the last one and take a look at this beautiful drop pod. I love this thing. I'd be happy just with this drop pod. It's beautiful. And I put a separator in here for us to actually be able to release from this thing. So there we go. A release. Let's 
activate our wheels and oh dear god we have bounced we have bounced a lot <laughs> oh i don't know why those wheels are making it bounce but okay let's roll over oh boy oh boy we are we are bouncing a lot okay hold on hold on give me a minute give me a minute okay we're good we're good we're good we now have control of the vehicle <laughs> After flipping around a bit and having a little glitch of, oh, I don't even know what that was, but okay, it, it was fun times. But yes, uh, we can turn on the insane lights on here as well. And yeah, just a fun, cool little rover to play around with. I, I love both the Mark IV and the Mark V. They are gorgeous, gorgeous little rovers. Very well designed, very, very well put together. Though I have to say the Mark V Ant is probably my favorite of the two. I don't know why, it's just, it's just gorgeous. Look at this little thing, it's beautiful. It's like a little go-kart on the moon, it's, it's great. And somehow fits two Kerbals inside of it. Uh, it's beautiful. But yes, if you would like to go and check these out for yourself, you can uh, go and take a look at the link in the description, as always. And I do hope you do check them out. If you haven't already, like I said, these have been out for ages, but now finally updated to the latest version of KSP. So, well, I was about to say, so there shouldn't be any bugginess, but clearly we have seen that they still do need a little bit of work. But I am happy to have them back in my game, because I have always loved these things. And yeah, I hope you do go check it out and have fun, and of course, that you come back for my next episode with whatever mod it may be that we check out then. Uh, but until then, uh, thank you for watching, my friends, and as always, have a good one. Ah, beautiful, beautiful little rover. Later, guys.